I've written out the curl of the electric field on this slide. Again, all the partial derivatives with respect to y are zero. So these two terms are zero, since our two-dimensional model only allows for field components to change in the xz direction. Also, ey is zero, since we're only solving for ez and ex components. ey is not going to change our solution. So then, all that is left from the curl operation is minus y hat dez dx minus dex dz. And that's the left side of Faraday's law. And we see that this only has a y component. So then the right side of Ampere's law must also only have a y component. So I'm going to write dhy dt. Then according to the diagram we drew earlier, if we want to evaluate, evaluate this equation in a manner that depends only on values that are stored in the computer, we should evaluate this equation at locations i plus 0.5, so half integer i's and half integer k's and at integer n's. So if we do this on the left side, we're going to get ez at n, i plus 1, k plus 0.5, minus ez at n, i, k plus 0.5. So this is a partial derivative in the x direction. And then we have ex, and we're taking a partial derivative in the z direction. So i plus 0.5, k plus 1, minus ex at n, i, plus 0.5, and then just k. So divided by z. And we, on the right side, we're going to get minus mu and hy n plus 0.5, i plus 0.5, k plus 0.5. And this is a time derivative, partial time derivative, so we are going to have n minus 0.5 here and at the same location as the other term. So now it's divided by delta t. And finally, we can solve for the future field component in this equation, and that would be hy at n plus 0.5. This is what I get when I solve for the future hy component. This hy update equation is different from what we had for the one-dimensional code. The first part is analogous, but what is different now is we also have to subtract the two neighboring EXs. Another difference, of course, is that we also are going to be performing this update equation at all of the k plus half indices. Okay, we've developed update equations for the AX, EZ, and HY field components for a two-dimensional grid. In order for us to now create a two-dimensional FDTD model in the computer, it will be easier to make a copy of the one-dimensional FDTD code that you wrote earlier and convert it into a two-dimensional code rather than just writing a two-dimensional FDTD code from scratch. So if we're going to convert your 1D FDTD code to 2D, take a look at your one-dimensional code and make a list of what you think you need to change or add to this one-dimensional code in order to convert it into a two-dimensional code. 